I've been on the move for quite a spell now, and I've seen a lot of the West. And I've also seen a lot of the things that live in it. They seem to have a few traits in common. For example, there's a kind of general urge to settle any argument by the use of brute force. Doesn't seem to matter much what starts the quarrel. It can be as little a thing as a hunk of stale meat. Or it can be a big important matter, like a beautiful female. Yep, there's nothing so small it won't fight, and nothing so big it won't fight. Funny thing is, of all these creatures, man's about the only one that'll fight without knowing what he's fighting over. Now, personally, I don't like violence. It's too nerve-wracking. My name's Destry, and I like staying out of trouble. Trouble interferes with my finding the man who framed me into a couple of miserable years in Texas State Prison. So I don't like to waste time knocking heads with anybody. I keep moving around and looking for Charlie Bent. Now, that's the man who framed me, and one of these days, I expect to find him. Meantime, I try to detour around troubles that aren't any of my business. Only lately, it seems like everybody insists on making their troubles my business. I'm thinking, for instance, of the Motleys and the Jellicoes, and I wish I wasn't. I've run across men who can smell out trouble long before it happens. That's a mighty handy ability, and I wish I had it. Because if I did, one thing I would smell out and avoid at all cost is a blood feud. You'd think a thing like that would be kept strictly in the family's concerns. Well, usually, in a way, I guess it is. Or was. But on the other hand... What you shooting at? I shot me a jelly go, Pa! Hey, what's going on up there? You sure you hit him, boy? Shot him right off in his horse. He's over there behind them rocks. Don't shoot! That's enough. Let's get out of here. Whoa, we got them jellicoes nailed down. Yeah, but they got us in a crossfire. Besides, my rifle's busted. If an I can't shoot jellicoes, nobody shoots jellicoes. Come on now, boy, I'll whop you. Looks like they're going. Do you like them? Oh, had some help, that's why. Better take a look. Come on. I still think we should have stayed. I told you no. What kind of motley are you? I never seen you shoot once. Well, doesn't have me a clear target. You know, if I didn't know you was third cousin Hattie's boy, I'd swear you was a flatlander. Now get mounted. Welcome, cousin. I warn you. I'm armed. Me and Jenny's right glad to see you. Why, he got shot, Jethro. He's losing a parcel of blood. Oh, don't let it worry you, miss. I'll be all right. Don't recognize him. From the Utah branch, man. Maybe. He sure is breathing. Reckon we can save him? It's worth a try. Can't rightly bury him in the family plot till we know his name. Yeah, right. Rather gamble and laugh and love when from 
subtle king this away. He rose that away. Petri was his name. How's he doing, Doc? Give me that arm and roll up your sleeve. Huh? Make a fist. Tight. Yeah, good big vein. That's a beauty. You'll do. I'll do what? You'll do to give him about a quart of your blood. Oh, now he's... he's lost more than that and all on account of you, as I understand it. Can you mix a blood like that without killing it? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you ever do this before, Doc? I've done lots of transfusions when I was a doctor in the Union Army. Trans what? Transfusions. It means giving blood to another. Seems to work out fine, about six cases out of ten. What happens to other time? Patient dies. Very interesting reaction. Think we ought to risk it? This man is dying from loss of blood while you two stand here and argue. I don't see how we can do him any harm. All right, Doc, I'll do it now. Now, how do I start? Fine. Sit down here and stick your arm out alongside him. Looks like just leave the old arm wound. Sure, the arm's fine. Bone isn't even broken. But it doesn't take much of a hole to let all the water out of a bucket. Doc, that's gonna hurt. You mean you're scared of a little old needle? And you let those motley shoot those big lead slugs at you? Well, that's different. That's a matter of family honor. Uh, Doc. We're going to charge him for this? Not if it works. Now hold still here while I stick you. Is that all? That's all. your blood pressure's four times what his is. What's that mean? It just means that you can't paddle a canoe up a waterfall. I wonder if he could be second cousin twice removed Lancelot. No, no. Lancelot got killed in that running with the Utah Motley. Sure is handsome, be one R. Now, what kind of thing is that to say? You know, all us Jellico men is mighty good looking. Oh, hush up, brother. Hey, Shelton, please. All right, all right. Up, up, up. Come on, come on. It must be 5 o'clock already. Chad, you go shoot something for breakfast. Like what? How do I know like what? You can't find a rabbit, shoot a crow. Get up. Come on, come on. Up, 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 up. Come on. Come on. Up, get up, get up. Come on. Uh, Uncle Lance, we uh, better get back to the farm. We stay right here. What for? You know what for. Because <laughs> we got some jellicos in town. We're going to go get them. Oh, we can't. It's Saturday. You know we can't do no killing in town till Monday. That's a stupid rule, Pa. Well, stupid or not, that's how we do it. Let's go home and come back on Monday. And maybe give them Jellicoes a chance to leave town. What kind of fighting man are you, anyhow? Cousin Morgan Salt. I reckon I'm hard enough to dent you, Yes, sir. you try. Oh, God, that's enough. Hold it. Pa, you ever seen the way he looks at Jenny Jellico? It ain't through a gun sight, that's for sure. Well, that's a lie. He could have shot her a couple of times. Well, I don't hold with shooting women. Well, I don't hold with killing women, neither. Unless it's by accident. Uh, Morgan, come on, get the breakfast going. You know, we got to get into town, get us some bullets, because we're going to need a whole heap of them on Monday. Come on, get it going there. Go easy, cousin. Who are you? Where am I? We're your kin, cousin. This here's Doc Finley's house. My name's Jenny. He's Jethro. What's your name? Destry. Destry, Jellicoe. 
Don't sound familiar. I, I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm not a... a Jellico. Well, then what was you doing in that fight? Well, as I recall, I was bleeding a lot. True. That's how come you're a Jellico. On account of your full of Jellico blood. Mine. Yours? Doc said you was going to die if he didn't give you one of them... them uh, 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 trans, trans, uh... Transfusion? That's right. Oh, but, but that's dangerous. That ain't half as dangerous as bleeding to death. Well, it's as you put it that way. Don't you worry, cousin. Ain't no blood better in the whole world than ours. As soon as you get back on your feet, you and me is gonna go out there and put it to work. Doing what? Killing Motley. Well, I thank you for saving my life, friends. But it's time you found out, I don't really hold with killing. Well, I reckon you got no choice. Motley's will kill you on sight anyhow. Well, who are the Motley's? They are the meanest, the nastiest bunch of pig-stealing murderers that ever burned down a revival meeting. It's a blood feud, Cousin Destry. It's been going on for more than a hundred years. I see. Well, if it goes on any longer, <laughs> you'll have to go on without me. I don't see how you can back out since you're Jellico now. I'm not. Full of fighting Jellico blood. <clears throat> That's only a technicality. I reckon the Marklis won't swallow that. No need to worry now, though, cousin. Can't be no killing in town till Monday morning. That's a rule. Well, friends, I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful. I thank you for the hospitality, and I thank you for the blood. <laughs> but I'm not going to kill or be killed Monday or Tuesday. <clears throat> Or any other day of the week, for that matter. What I am going to do is get out of here. Somebody will bring me my clothes. Uh, you go on, get Jenny. Go on, go on, get. Cousin Destry ain't been in the family long enough. He, he's kind of shy. Well, young fella, they tell me you're raring to go. Oh, th th this here is Doc Finley. Well, they are right. Right out of this cockeyed town. You're not leaving it. <laughs> I'm going to do my utmost. Oh, no, I wish you wouldn't. Sometimes it takes a couple of days for these transfusion cases to turn sour and die. But I guess there's not much danger. Jethro's got right healthy blood. Well, that's fine. I aim to keep it in my veins where it belongs. I guess I owe you something, Doctor. No, no, it's all included in the flat rate. Flat rate? Yeah, the Jellico family plan. They paid me by the month, same as the Motleys. Well, uh, I'm not Jellico. Uh-huh, little mental fuzziness there. Interesting side effect, but nothing to worry about. Probably clear up in a couple of days. You're all very nice people. <laughs> and you should all be put away somewhere where you can't hurt yourself. Oh, oh, you're a little weak and dizzy, aren't you? But you need some good food under your belt. <laughs> That's exactly what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your help, Doc. Not at all, Mr. Jellico. I hope I can save your life again next time. <laughs> Good night. Gentlemen? You're the one we've been hearing about. I'm the one called Vestry. I don't believe I know y'all. Ants Motley. This here's my boy Jed, my boy Lonzo, my boy Pert, my boy Corey, and uh, that one is uh, second cousin Morgan. Well, uh, before there's any more misunderstanding and bloodshed, let's get a couple of things straight. I rode into your fight by mistake. My name is Destry, not Jellico. And also, I'm riding out of town today, so I don't want any part of your feud. Well, names don't count. Blood counts. You see, the whole town knows that Doc Finley pumped over a quart of Jellico blood into you to save your life. Well, that doesn't make me a Jellico. Makes you Jellico enough for us. Now, we're going to kill you the first thing Monday morning or sooner, if you do us the favor of riding out of town. So I'd suggest you uh, make your final arrangements. Craziest thing I've ever heard of. We've got a fighting chance if we can just get out of here and get back to the ranch. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe grown men could be so stupid. Of course, we'll have to wait till after dark to try it. We could hold up till then. I know what I'll do. 
I'll get the law on my side. There ain't no law man in this town. No sheriff, no marshal? Never need one. It's a real peaceful town. Peaceful? Why, sure. Ain't nobody been killed around here for years. Except Angelico's motley. Now, come on, Destry. Help me figure out a way to get back to the ranch. Maybe if we're all right out together. I'm not going back to the ranch. Well, we can't stay here in Doc's place, and we can't fight the Motley's here in town. I'm not fighting Motley's. What kind of a Jellico are you? Brand new one. I've had no experience at it. Don't the sight of a Motley make your blood boil? It's a little warm around my elbow here, but I keep my head. You know, I got a half a mile. That's about the size of it. Now, hold on, brother. It's like he says. He's new at being a member of the family. He gets the hang of it after a couple more gunfights. You got to remember what he done for us. Yeah, I guess you're right, Jenny. Sure I am. Now, you go out and enjoy yourself. Buy yourself some ammunition or something. Yeah, that always makes me feel real good. No hard feelings, Destry. Oh, no, no, no hard feelings. <laughs> You know, Destin Jethro is right. We'd have a lot better chance if we got out to the ranch before Monday. We got Granny out there to help fight. Mr. Aunt Sarah and Cousin Flory, Cousin Jill, Second Cousin. Well, you know, it's been an awful strain on Jethro, being almost the last fight in Jellicoe and all. Now, you come into town gives us Jellicoe's almost a fighting chance again. Oh, now, Miss, will you listen to me, please? You know, them Motley's having so many men and being so mean and all. Well, all except one. Well, good afternoon, Miss Jenny. You know these gentlemen, of course. Stand up here now. <clears throat> this is the new one, fellows. Now, uh, take a deep breath and hold it. Height, 76. W what's this all about? Hold your breath now. Shoulder, 20. Turn around. Breathe. Chest, 42. Turn around. Breathe. Sleeve. 36. <laughs> I'd say you're going to live for a good long while with any luck. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I presume you want the usual dark suit preferred by members of the family? I don't want any suit. Oh, well, not now, of course. But when the time comes. Well, there must be some mistake. Uh, I didn't ask for a tailor. Well, I'm not a tailor. That's handled by Mr. Fife. But since I had to measure you anyway, I'll just pass the measurements on to him. I guess I should have explained. This is Mr. Turner, our carpenter. He makes the finest coffins in the territory. And Mr. Watts, our stone cutter. He makes a beautiful headstone with angels. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Hmm? Get out. I'll call of you. Get out. But Mr. Jeff, don't call me Jellicles. Maybe we'd better go, boys. He should stay quiet. This nonsense I want to take. I'm getting out of this crazy town before another hour goes by.
You gonna shoot? Well, not if you're not. You got yourself a deal. I say, you see, um... Ah, oh, never mind. Did I see who? Ah, oh, don't make no difference. Jenny? Look, I said don't make no difference. Did you? Sure, I saw her. Pretty girl. Ah, oh, she ain't no girl. She's a jellico. Just possible to be both, you know. Morgan! You better get and keep getting. My pleasure. Morgan, where in tarnation you at? What happened to you, boy? I was a looking. You sure you was looking in the same state as us? You know, boy, you starting to worry me. Look, I figure you climb in a hole or something. the sanctity of these premises when they're pursuing a jellico. Uh, you must be Destry Jellico. Don't you believe it? Now listen, Reverend. I don't hold with killing people in churches. But you better go out there and keep those boys from looking in here. Otherwise, you'll have to have a couple of dead motleys and what's worse, maybe one dead Destry cluttering up your place of worship. in here see for yourself you know I'd hate to think a man of the cloth would deceive me just to save a little old killing you have my word mr. Motley there's nobody here but us Christians I guess he means us Paul I did hear a horse go by rather rapidly well I suppose he made it into town by now you better get yourself ready for a big funeral on Monday though Reverend I keep the service handy. Yeah. Thank you. Reverend, this view is getting downright hazardous. There's some way it can be stopped. Impossible. It's been going on for too long. Well, there ought to be a way. There's got to be a way if I'm ever going to get out of this town alive. As a man of the cloth, I have tried. Unfortunately, all I got out of it was bullet holes in my cloth. Hmm. Say, I've got an idea. Yeah. May not be a very good one, but it's worth a try. Will you come with me? Of course. But where? Into town. Hmm. Simplest thing in the world. We're going to organize the irresistible force of public opinion. I wonder why nobody ever thought of it before. Ah, uh, 
Folks, we've called you together for this special meeting because our friend here has some words to say to you. Now, I hope you'll all listen to him and take his wisdom to your hearts. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, good people, for coming out here to listen to me. The way news travels in a small town, I reckon I don't have to tell you who I am. You're the new Jellica, ain't you? No, I'm not. I'm the old Destry. I was born a Destry, and I'll always be a Destry. Except I'll probably end up getting killed for a Jellico, or having to kill a bunch of Motleys. Now, this is a nice, clean, decent town. Fine place to live. But all this killing is a blot on the community to disgrace. And nobody, nobody can stop it, except you good people yourselves. Now, you can stop it just simply by not having anything to do with the Motleys or the Jellicoes until they promise to stop fighting. It's called a boycott. You just stop selling them clothing and food and provisions, and you don't talk to them. You, you don't have anything to do with them. Did I say something wrong? Trevor? Nice try, boy. Why won't they listen to me? Why won't a buffalo hunter become a vegetarian? You please talk sense. The feuds are living. It's the industry that supports this town. Industry? Sure. You take Turner the carpenter. He hasn't made anything but coffins for years. And Fife the tailor? Who needs a tailor around here except for a suit to get buried in? And Peterson, the storekeeper, he makes his biggest profits on guns and ammunition for the feud. You already know about the undertaker and stonecutter. Well, there must be some decent people in town. We're all decent people. We just got to make a living, that's all. Take me, for instance. Smell that air. Delicious. And I hope to go on breathing it. Sure, it's delicious. It's healthy. It's invigorating. If the dog gone healthy, nobody ever gets sick around here. If it wasn't for the feud, I'd starve to death. Take even the reverend. The only time he gets enough people together to pass the hat is at a burial. That's why we were so glad when you showed up. We were sure running low on male jellicoes. Now you've gone and disappointed everybody. Well, now that is a crying shame. Hey, wait a minute. Since you can't get out of town without getting killed anyway, I'd give some serious thought to the future if I was you. Exactly what I've been doing. Good. Then it's time you started to pick her. Pick her? A wife. I know half a dozen jellico widows be tickled to death to get a fine, healthy young specimen like you. Why? You're as touched as the others. What do I want with a wife? Well, you want somebody to carry on your name after you're gone, don't you? You better hurry. Truce is just about up. You're have to start going any time now. Everybody else, you're disappointed in me. Sort of. Not much, though. Hey, did you have much trouble when you rode out of town? Trouble? Oh, no. I got shot at, uh, stomped on, run half to death, but no real trouble. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? Say, Destry, did you ever think of getting yourself a wife and, and starting a family? Well, Jenny, such a delicate matter as that, uh, I'd just soon not rush into it, thank you. Well, you know, we badly outnumbered by them Motleys, and I was thinking, you got our blood now and all. Well, I hear Cousin Rose would take kindly to a proposal from you. Who's she? Oh, she's Cousin Tolliver's widow. Oh, she's a real nice gal. Uh, she's fat as a hog, of course, but she's a real nice gal. Uh, 
Jenny, if you're so all fired anxious to increase the family, why don't you or Jethro get married? Oh, Jethro, he's already married. He's got a wife out on the ranch. She's expecting. Me, uh, I got kind of a problem. Jenny, Esther, what's this I hear about you making some kind of a speech? Nothing special. I just want everybody to know where I stand. Good. I hope you let them know we'll fight to the death. Destry, oh, uh, did you ever think about picking a wife and raising a family? Uh, not for two, three minutes now. Well, the reason I ask is I uh, hear second cousin Maybell would take kindly to a proposal from you. Oh, is that a fact? Who's she, another Jellicoe widow? That's right. Interested? No. Oh, you'd like her. Of course, she's got that broken nose and she walks kind of funny, but she's a real sweet gal. Well, I bet she is. I'll keep her in mind. Well, you see, I sort of got this plan figured out how we can get out of town tonight. We could take second cousin Mabel with us and, and uh, you have kind of a chance to get to know her. Granny could chaperone for a while till we got a chance to make it legal. Let's hit the plan. I ain't seen the Mockers around town today, so I figured they're probably out guarding the trails outside of town. I can guarantee it. Yeah. Now, now this here's the main road leading out of town, and there's the, uh, the fork to the left that goes out past our place. Now, if you take the one to the right, it goes past the church in about a mile. You know what that is? Exactly. Yeah. Well, what's the other line over there? Well, that's the trail the other side of town that you and me's gonna take, we can circle around to the ranch while Destry rides out the front way to draw their fire. Ain't that slick? Oh, yeah, that's slick. Uh, and there's just one little hitch, Jethro. What's that? I'm not gonna do it. You're not gonna do it? Mm -hmm. I'm glad to know you're here straight, even if you don't think straight. But I'm not gonna be a sitting duck decoy not for you or anybody else. You got no choice. You got Jellicoe blood in you, and I'm the head of the family. You fight Motley's where and when I say, or you fight me right now. Now, Jethro, you listen to me. Right now, I say. Now, Jethro, I got no cause to fight with you. Well, I'm fixing to give you one. Stop it, Jethro. You say you're fighting for the Motley's. Jethro, you'd be a good boy. Now, Jethro. Now, Jethro, you mustn't. <laughs> oh, you're going to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. You're really going to hurt yourself, Jethro. <laughs> Well, you mustn't do that. That's not very nice. Jethro? Jethro, you're going to hurt your arm that way. You really are. You fight when I say fight. You stop it, Jethro! Listen to your sister, Jethro. Talk louder, Jenny. <laughs> You're sorry you ever got Jellicoe blood in you. Yeah, the way things are going, I could learn to be. Well, I know how you feel. Mm. Sometimes I hate the whole idea of this fuse. Of course, I couldn't say that to anybody else. I know how you feel. Oh, I'm so shot up and bruised up, I don't know how I feel. And of course, those motleys is a no-good, low-down, pig-stealing bunch of mangy wolves. And shooting's too good for them. All set one. Uh, kind of nice appearing, young fella. Looks like a, a human being instead of a motley. That's him. Second cousin Morgan. You like Morgan, do you? He, he won't tell nobody. Well, I won't tell anybody. How'd you get to know him? Well, I, I don't know him too good. Only met him once. Then he did something real sweet. He did, huh? What was that? 
You didn't shoot me. Well, that was sweet. How'd it happen? Well, I was out in the South 30 picking wild blackberries. And I looked up, and all of a sudden there he was, looking right through the vines. <laughs> the rifle pointing right at my heart. What'd he do then? Nothing. Just reached over and ate one of the blackberries, and, and he's gone. That's the only time you've ever been together? Why, you're in love with Morgan, aren't you? Oh, no. I couldn't be. He's a motley. One blackberry and you both fell in love. But don't say that. We hate each other. Well, we have to. On account of the feud, huh? What's this feud all about? How'd it get started? Well, I'm not really sure. It happened a long time ago, way back in the hills. A, a Jelko gal left a motley man waiting at the altar, till the way around one. Tempers kind of flared. Nobody's truly sure who did what to who. It was terrible, though. Hmm. Jenny, uh, I think I changed my mind about some things. Go back to that ranch with you tonight. I got a chore to do first, though. Can I help you? Yeah. You can help by keeping Jethro here in town until I get back. Will you try? Well, we have to be out of town by midnight, you know. That's when the truce is up. Well, you hold him here as long as you can. I'm not back by then. You go to the ranch using the main road, you hear? Well, what about you? Me? I'll be the decoy. <laughs> They ain't left town yet, Paul. Perks are watching the livery stable, and Lonzo's got his eye on Doc's place. Well, we better get in the firing position, I guess. They gotta make a run for it pretty soon. No, not you. You stay and watch the camp. You're such a poor shot, you ain't no good in an ambush, no how. <laughs> Goodbye to your sister, Jenny. Uh, you, you ate one of her blackberries one time. Yeah, I did. And I know it was wrong, but I couldn't help myself. Oh, I loved that girl from the first time I got her there in my sights. Oh, she plumb ruined my hankering to shoot Jellicoe's. You sound like you might be interested in ending this feud. Oh, yeah, I would. Especially the way it's been going lately. Why, you're not Jethro. You're that new Jellico fella. <clears throat> I'm that old Estri fella. So remember in the woods back there? You know, I didn't... You didn't shoot me. Well, now, I'd like to do the same thing for you, Morgan. You'll do the right thing. All right. Well, name it. Well, I think you ought to marry Jenny Jellico tonight. Oh, I'd love to marry Jenny. Oh, that's a terrible, dangerous thing to try and do. Seems to me you're forgetting the biggest danger of all. What's that? Me. All right, we've got a point there. All right, take me to the wind. <laughs> Ain't this a nice surprise? Stand aside, Morgan, give me a clean shot. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, cousin. You never believe what that Jellicoe was gonna make me do. You've been a powerful nuisance to us these last few days. But you're all through now. <laughs> also, ain't gonna shoot him here in camp, are you? He's liable to flop around and bleed all over the bedroll. 
that's so. Go get a couple of horses and we'll haul him out. Get his gun first. Why didn't you shoot him? Why should I? Well, I figured my wedding can be a lot more fun than your funeral. Now what do we do? Well, first we go see the preacher. What about him? We'll need another witness. Take him along. I tell you, he's run out on us. That's what he's done. Now, Jethro, he promised he'd be back. We gotta wait for him. We're gonna wait 20 minutes more for him, and that's all. Then we go. Hey, that's him now. Whoa! Whoa! It's Granny. She must have got worried and come in to get him. I wonder how she got by the mobbing. I'm wondering how we're going to explain to her we've been waiting for a Jellicoe that claims he ain't a Jellicoe. Well, it'd be sight easier if she won't death. Yeah. It's a most unusual request, but as a man of God, it is my duty to do anything possible to stop this bloodshed. Well, thank you, Reverend. I figured I could count on you. You just try to keep the groom here quiet, and I'll see if I can bring in the bride. Give me about five minutes to get the horses out of the stable and start out the back road. Then you head out the front way. I'll circle around behind and meet you beyond the pole. Hold on. I hear somebody. Don't shoot, Granny. He's the one we are telling you about. About time you showed up. Where's your horse? Tied him outside of town. I had to sneak past all the motley. What did he say? What did he say? Do you know where they are? Most of them. Uh, howdy, ma'am. You don't look like no Jellico. That's right, ma'am. She's a granny. She come in town to help us. She's my death, but she's a fine shot. What'd you say? That's me. You know how we can get out of town past the Martins? I'll tell you what. You take your granny and go according to your plan, and, and Jenny here will come with me. Oh, fired, you're sure you could hit him. Don't shoot, Pa! It's me! I thought you was driving out of the road. Me and Perk was out the Jellico Road past the Forks, and we heard somebody come along and turn off toward the church. By the time we got there, we seen that new Jellico taking Lonzo and Morgan inside. He's tucked them prisoner. Well, why didn't you shoot him? Couldn't without getting a, a shot at Morgan and Lonzo. I figured I'd better come tell you quick. Something mighty funny going on. Now, well, we better get after him. Come on. What you say? I said, there they come. Don't shoot, Granny. There's too many of them. Well, which one you want me to shoot? No, 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 Granny. Well, there they go. What you say? I said, there they go. I wonder why they're going so fast. Maybe they caught up with Jenny. What you say? Oh, never mind, Granny. Oh, hold on a minute, Reverend. Uh. <clears throat> oh, hold on a moment, got here. 
somebody from your family. You can be the bridesmaid. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God in the presence of these witnesses to unite this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. If there be anyone present who knows any just reason why they should not be so united, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. Nobody said anything, Reverend, sir. But I think the ceremony would go just as well if we all got down lower. As you know, marriage is not to be entered into lightly. Clever headed engine to my hit Alonzo or Morgan in there. Hey, Pa, I snuck up close enough to hear. There's a wedding going on in there. What? Morgan and Jenny Jellico. Oh, we gotta stop it. Go on. All right, Aunt, let's get it over with. I ain't no time for that. They're gonna ruin everything with a wedding in there. Who is? Morgan and Jenny. We gotta stop it. <laughs> oh, push on it. Oh, come on, push. <laughs> Let's see if we can get one of these winners over here. Pull it flat, don't we? Promise to love, honor, and obey him till death do you part? I do. Yeah. What did you say? Hey? Go ahead, Reverend. They missed their chance to protest. Do you, Morgan, take this woman to do your lost place? Do you love on her in a bed till death do you part? Say I do. Now, Jed, you quit your fuss and I'll break your ribs. This all started because the Jellico left the motley waiting at the church, right? Think so. Motley left the Jellico. You're a liar. It doesn't matter anyhow. Look, there's a Jellico and a motley all married up, right? Legal and in the church. So now, you're all one family. We're all one family. And Ants, which I hate to say this, you're my father and... Oh, you're my brother and... Well, anyway, we're related by marriage. That's pretty disgusting. What's the happening? What's he say? Granny, the feud's over! Why don't somebody tell me things? to knuckle down and make the best out of a bad situation. Well, Destry, you saved your own hide, but you sure threw a lot of people out of work. You're not very popular around here. Well, if it comes to a choice, I'd rather be alive than popular, thank you. Well, it's easy enough for you. You can ride on. But what about the rest of us now that the feud's over? The carpenter, the tailor, the storekeeper, all gonna be poor on account of you. Families all gonna go hungry. Oh, I don't know. I hear the Motley's got a lot of men folk. Jellicoe's got women. So? So? Figure a man who can sew a burying outfit ought to be able to make a wedding suit. A fella can build a coffin ought to be able to do a cradle. And I suppose a man that can sell bullets can sell diapers. And I guess I could... There's your answer, folks. You just got to convert to a peacetime economy. Uh...